The future of work and the digital revolution, implications for career development. Now, this was actually a presentation I did a couple of years ago, I think 2016 or thereabout, long before COVID. But it's interesting to see the projections that were made and how things actually turned out. So what I've done is I've, I've updated this presentation and we'll have a look at what the future of work will be over the next 10 year horizon. So let's get into the discussion. Office of the future. What's our agenda? What is work? The concept of work. And we look at some current facts about work. What are the current trends affecting the workplace? And we'll ask ourselves the question, are robots actually taking over? What's the future may look like and what's happening now? And then we we'll look at what's going to happen in the next 10 years and what we should expect. And finally, how do we prepare? So the concept of work, what are our assumptions? Our discussion will relate to an employer-employee relationship within a formal workplace structure. So I'm going to tell a story. Once upon a time, there was the typist and the typewriter. Now, some of us will remember what a typist was, and some of us will also remember what a typewriter looks like. But both got replaced by what? The email and the internet, word processing software, and the personal computer. Now, this story tells us what? That tech will continuously change the way we work. So today we don't have type, the, the, the job function typist no longer exists. Why? Because the typist has been replaced by these three things, email and the internet, word processing software, and the personal computer. We now type our letters ourselves. We send our letters ourselves through the chat, you know, through the channel of the internet. We don't need a typist to do that anymore. So if you want, I know I, I have friends who actually know how to type professionally. I have friends who can do, I don't know, there's um, how many words per minute. But that skill is like an obsolete skill. How many, I mean, do you really need people that can actually type um, so many words per minute in today's economy? You don't need them. You know why? Because you don't actually need to type anywhere any longer. There is software that can voice type. So I don't need to actually type. I can read the document and the software will type it for me. And I'm sure that there's probably software available that will scan the documents and type it. Even if you've written the document with, um, you know, in, with your handwriting, I'm sure there's a software that can actually scan your handwriting and um, lift everything you've written and in, in a typed format. So what, are, what, what am I saying? AI has done so much and has you created so much capabilities. Now, what happens to our typist? Typing no longer became relevant. So the typist had to upskill, probably go and do a course and maybe learn admin, learn how to do some other things um, to remain relevant and to remain you know, employed because nobody needed a typist anymore. So maybe the typist had to upgrade and become um, a personal assistant, probably had to learn other skills, um, definitely had to learn how to use a personal computer and, and probably learn how, how to learn um, some other skills to remain relevant. So that's what technology does. As technology progresses, individuals have to continuously upskill and learn new things to remain relevant within the workplace. So what is work? Wikipedia tells us that employment is a relationship between two parties, usually based on a contract where work is paid for, where one party, which may be a corporation for profit, not for profit organization, cooperative or other entity is the employer and the other is the employee. But to most of us, work is either what I have to do to survive or what I love to do and get paid for. 
or somewhere in between. So where are you? Are you working to survive or are you at the point where you're actually doing what you love and you get paid for? And you get paid for it. So before we are told get a good job, work hard and earn money. And with the money you earn, you can do what? Buy the things you want and do the things you love. But now, now, it, that, you know, that concept has changed. Now we have been told do what you love and get paid for it. Follow your passion. And I hear that a lot from the younger generation. Ah, it's not my passion. I want to follow my dream and my passion. I'm all for following dreams and passions. But I'm also, you know, I also want to remind us that you have to be realistic. Bills have to be paid and you have to survive. So sometimes you might not be able to follow your dream and follow your passion. You might just have to get a job first and then work towards following your dream and your passion. But the bottom line is what? Live life, enjoy life and have fun. And today's economy, that is what the younger generation want to do. They want to do what they love, get paid for it and enjoy their lives. So let's look at some current facts. The highest form of technology was rated as the most important thing to workers above money, perks and office space. And this um, this research was done by the think tank um, Adobe, um, the future of work. 80% of office workers would continue to work even if they won the lottery. So that's that's basic reason, isn't it? Even if I'm a multi-billionaire, I still want to work. I want to add value. I want to do something. I don't, I mean, yes, it might be fun to wake up, loll around and loaf around and do absolutely nothing. But trust me, after one week of doing that, you probably be tired and bored and you actually want to do something. So people actually want to work. They want to be relevant. They want to, you know, to add value. They want to be... They want to actually do something and achieve something. So people want to work. The rise of the freelancer. One out of every three people in the US, one out of every four in the UK, and one out of every two in India are moonlighting. That is, they work after hour, after you know normal office hours. Um, in Nigeria, almost everyone I know has a side hustle has something they're doing outside their paid employment. Almost everyone I know that has an Instagram account uses it for, in fact, I, I, have, I know people that have like two, three different Instagram accounts, one for fun and one for work, one for business. So people are selling one thing or the other. You see that they're selling a service or they're selling a product or they're, they're selling something. Almost everyone I know has a side hustle that is making money on the side from doing one thing or the other. And that has become the norm. Um, people are moonlighting and they're freelancing. And that has implications, uh, you know, on the flip side of it as well. So we, we're also seeing increase in health issues um, as more people become attached to devices and gadgets. Because we are online, we are doing so much online, we are attached to these gadgets. And it's not helping our eyesight. It's not helping our health. So we've got people that have back pain, neck pain, and of course, eyesight um, issues because we look and focus so much on our gadgets. If you're listening to me, you're actually using a gadget, probably your laptop, you're watching this video, you're, you're listening, you're, you're using a gadget. So in as much as um, technology is good, of course, it has its downsides as well. So millennials will comprise 50% of the global workforce by 2020 and 75% by 2025. By 2025, one quarter of jobs will be replaced by either smart software or robots. 35% of existing UK jobs are at risk of automation in the next 20 years. So this has been a constant conversation. Machines have been replacing human beings for centuries but in as much as you know one set of jobs are going a new set of jobs are going to be created because one for example cyber security because a, a lot of our activities online there has been increased um, issues with cyber security which will require more people to work within that space so while computers are taking over one hand it's also going to open up um, 
more technical jobs uh, on the other. So let's move on. Current trends affecting how we work. So I'll just quickly. I'll just quickly run through that. So the first thing, of course, is globalization. International trade has, you know, is much easier and the world has become interconnected and interdependent. Once upon a time, if I was in Nigeria, I would find it very difficult to buy things online from the US or from the UK or from Europe or anywhere. But today that's history. So our bank accounts are connected. Um, we can buy anything from anywhere. Delivery can, you know, goes everywhere. Uh, with the click of a button, all of this is done. And not just for um, items and products and services, but talent as well. So people are being recruited from different parts of the world, working for organizations across the world, because a lot of the work we do is done online. Um, I work for I work for an organization on a voluntary basis and we have people uh, across the globe and we all work together. So we've got people in Hong Kong, um, in Nigeria, in the UK here. We've got people in Spain, Canada, where have you? And we all come together and we work. So we send emails, we get the work done, we do our reports. And Microsoft, um, the Microsoft um, 365 has actually been a real, you know, it's really helpful when we're working collaboratively together. So we can share documents, work on documents together, um, hold our meetings, um, everything is just, just, we're all in that ecosystem and, you know, work goes on seamlessly and um, go, work goes on seamlessly. Um, across the globe. So globalization is some one of the things that has uh, become quite prominent and um, prevalent in today's economy. Mobility. So COVID has taught us that we can work from anywhere. You don't have to be physically in the office. So we are seeing virtual office spaces, renting office spaces, no longer People don't have to own an office. You just need to get to the office and pack your pack your laptop or pack yourself somewhere. Use the facility and walk away. So we are all connected through de devices and we can work from anywhere in the world. Digital natives, technically savvy, upward and fast moving. So we are driving organizational change and the workplace is getting younger. And by getting younger, not just in age, but in the way we think. If you are going to remain relevant, you have to think young and you have to be very versatile and dynamic in order to survive. New behavior. Our lives are an open book. We share everything. So we're taking selfies and doing video videos of dancing and dancing on Instagram and what have you. I see all sorts of, I mean, I see all sorts of things online. I see husband and wife, you know, doing all sorts of funny things. On, everybody's doing all sorts of funny things online. You know, there's no hiding place. And our information is in so many places. You have signed up for so many things in so many places, uh, signed up for this and signed up for that. Google has so much of our information. You've used a search engine. The, Google knows where you are, what you've done, where you've been, what you order, which bank accounts you use. I mean, there's so much of our information out there. So we have to be very, very careful. That's why cybersecurity is an issue. So we're very comfortable with publicly sharing our personal life on social media. The way we do things has changed. So we, le we learn, we teach, we communicate and we distribute using tech. Tech, 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 tech. More about tech. Self-driving cars, the internet of things, wearable technology, artificial intelligence, all of these things affect the way we live and work. Still on tech. So back in 2016, Mark Zuckerberg created a simple AI that helps him run his home. So you've got Amazon Echo and Alexa. I think Google has, I don't know what Google calls his own. Um, you know, you just give this AI instructions and it does stuff for you. So on my phone, I can say, hey, Google, call my son and Google will call my son or call David. Google calls David. Voice commands, you know, controlling your home. Alexa, put on the lights. Alexa, play music. Alexa, take a selfie. You know, AI is everywhere and it helps us. It makes our life a whole lot easier. 
Sometimes I ask myself, what would we do if we don't have the internet for one day? Just one day. What what exactly are we going to do? I remember when Facebook, you know, it didn't crash. Would I say it crashed? Well, Facebook was unavailable. Let me use that word for about seven hours. And I remember it was almost, it was a disaster. People were shouting all across the globe. People couldn't buy. A lot of people who owned shops on Facebook couldn't transact business. Instagram was down. Facebook was down. WhatsApp was down. And a lot of people use these tools for their business and they couldn't do anything for that period of time. It was scary. And so I think it was only Twitter that was working and everybody now ran to Twitter. Um, everybody now ran to Twitter and Twitter had a, had a go at Facebook, you know, yeah, it was, it, I can laugh about it, but to a lot of people, it wasn't funny. So our lives are, you know, so dependent on the internet and the stuff that we do, almost everything we do is on the internet. I, as an individual, if I do not have connection, it's like, I'm totally useless for this. I can't, I, I cannot do, I can't work. It's as simple as that. If there is no internet, it means I am not working. That's it. That's the end of work for the day. There's little or nothing I'm going to be able to do. And I know that is the same for a lot of organizations. If the internet does not work for any reason, a lot of organizations are going to be handicapped. So I think that's just um, food for thought. It makes us realize how reliant we are on technology. So what's still talking about technology we've got actroids and humanoids germanoids and chatbots robots are becoming more lifelike by the day so we've got robots like sophia from hansen robotics can have very legible conversations display detailed facial expressions and execute multiple functions even acting in short films i remember that a particular country actually gave this robot a citizenship I, I mean, it recognized the robot as a legal entity. Why the, that particular country did that, I do not know. But this robot is a citizen of that particular country. So many hotels, fast foods and other customer facing entities are engaging the use of actroids to replace front office staff. So robots like Sophia from Human Robots can have very legible conversations, like I said. Um, and you can see her here. She's got she displays um, good facial expressions. This video that I'm actually making can be can be done by an AI. All I need to do is write the text, everything that I need to say, write it clearly down and the AI will do the rest and produce the video for me. Easy peasy. So AI, you know, is doing a lot of things and making our lives easier by the day. AI replacing versus transforming the demand for better and faster goods and services drive the development of technology to provide creative and innovative solutions demand for a better faster and increased value of service will rise so people want better things faster things more effective more accurate more companies will turn to ai to provide solutions so we're looking at healthcare teaching and learning human resources and customer relationships are already being highly impacted by ai robots will take over billions of jobs but as all jobs disappear new ones will emerge ai will transform the way we work the of the future now this office was really an office of the future back in 2016 um, this was Amazon's proposed new headquarters and the good news is that by 2018 they had finished building and by 2018 they had finished building the domes and it was dedicated by Jeff Bezos himself so we can see this is an aerial view of the domes and it you know just goes to show what man can imagine um they will do and the the picture on the at the beginning of this presentation was apple's they call it the spaceship or the ring that was apple's new office and it's it is absolutely massive completely you know runs on renewable energy 
thousands and thousands and thousands of meters of green spaces. It's got a theater, it's got a hall, it's got a gym, it's got, um, it's got canteens and restaurants. It's got so many facilities for staff to work, you know, state of the art workspaces. Um, it's got a huge research center. What are we saying? This office is a dream. You know, anybody working in Apple, you know, is just working in a dream space. But that is the office of the future. And I think I read somewhere in the news that I think August, um, Apple is asking people to start working back in the office, I think maybe three days a week. I mean, who wouldn't want to go to that kind of office? I wouldn't mind going to that office five days a week if I had to, you know. It's absolutely amazing. So that is the workplace of the future. So let's look at what would we should expect in the workplace of the future. So we're going to be more transparent and measurable, no hiding places. People will get fairly paid for the work done. Earning potential will be based on merit. More emphasis will be on specialization. Offices will continue to be open. No one will own. So, yeah, in the days of it's the MD's office, it's the finance manager's office, it's the whoever's office. I think that era has ended and what people will need is a space. So carry yourself on your laptop to work, park yourself in a space, use the space when you need it and then leave and allow somebody else to use it. So organizations can actually share spaces. I have a colleague who runs a small software company and he said, you know, post COVID, he has not, I mean, they've not been into the office for about two years. He does not use the office anymore and he's planning to shut it down because he doesn't, I mean, nobody goes to the, what are they doing there? They all work online and they work very, very effectively. So they don't go to the office. So what does he need the office for? And we're going to see more of that. Um, some organizations will ask you to come into the office to at least touch base and, you know, let them know that you're still, <laughs> you're still alive. You're still there. So um, you don't, you're not going to spend five days in, from Monday to Friday in the office, two days a week, three days a week. A lot of organizations have, you know, made flexible working a permanent thing. So what we need is just the space. Complex offices will no longer be required. Formal education versus capabilities. So there's going to be less emphasis on formal education and more emphasis on capabilities and proven skills. Learning is everywhere. So I, there are a lot of, the, of universities, even Ivy League schools that are teaching things for free. What they will not give you is the certificates at the end of the program, except you pay, but you can get the learning, you can get the knowledge. And once you can prove that you have the knowledge and the capability, organizations are ready to hire. So the future of the worker of the future must prove that he can do what he says he can do. Dwindling lifetime careers and job security. So once upon a time, people would do 30 years active service. I remember uh, I remember um, doing an audit back in the day and um, there was a particular gentleman, they called him head of state and they said they called, they gave him that title because he had, I think it used 35 years within that um, particular organization. That no longer happens. I think the, 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 the average time or period people spend within um, a particular role or particular organization is about two years, 18 months to two years, and then they're off to the next assignment. So work will be more on a demand, short time and contract basis. Nobody wants to be permanently tied down to um, a particular organization. Transition from one job to the other is a lot easier and flexible work hours allow for more time to relax, have fun and enjoy life. So like I said, a lot of the younger generation like to freelance and moonlight. So they like to do two, three separate jobs for two, three organizations, you know, within flexible time. And they don't like being, you know, stuck in an organization for too long before they move to a new assignment. So change is something that uh, the younger generation wants to see more frequently. Driverless cars, 3D printing, actroids, and AI-driven smart homes. 
and offices. Technology will continue to drive the way we live, act and work. So what's happening now? What's happening now? We've discussed partly what's happening now, but what else is happening now? Um, Post-COVID, we've seen the increased use of artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things. And, you know, I said AI is good at doing things humans are bad at. So, hybrid working, virtual offices, global talent search and global teams. We are seeing a decline in travel and an increase in online meetings. Digital, tra digital transformation is on the right. So a lot of organizations are still transforming, you know, to, they're digitally transforming. And that will continue over the, the next um, foreseeable future. Digital outsourcing. Why on earth should I get, you know, back office activity? It can be digitally outsourced these days. Flexible worksheets and results oriented, you know, structure versus time spent. So nobody's going to clock you in and say, oh, you came into the office at eight o'clock and you can't go until six, six o'clock. Nobody's going to do that. Or you sat down behind. We saw that you logged onto your system at eight o'clock and you're not supposed to log off until five. Nobody's going to do that. What we're going to tell you is we need this report by close of business tomorrow. You need to get the reports how you how you want to do it if you want to do it in two hours fine if you want to do it in 10 hours fine all we know is that you need to get the report out by close of business tomorrow so it's going to be results driven not time spent and we're going to see flatter organizations with a completely different management approach so companies are working in teams as opposed to units and departments so we've said it earlier rise of freelancers and contractors People do not want to be tied down to, uh, you know, in too many in, 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 a, in a permanent uh, position for too long. They want to be allowed to change frequently and be more flexible. And of course, cybersecurity is a continuous issue because we spend so much time online. We are also vulnerable to cyber attacks. The next 10 years, what to expect? The metaverse and virtual reality. Companies and even churches now have representations in the metaverse or they have organizations in the metaverse. You can even get real jobs and be paid a salary. And this will increase in the future. I know of a church that is only existent in the metaverse. It does not have an internet. It doesn't have a website. It's not on the internet. It doesn't have a physical location, but it exists in the metaverse. And people go there to fellowship in the metaverse. Organizations are also creating um, platforms in the metaverse for their companies as well. And they're holding meetings as well in the metaverse. So we're going to see an increase in that over the next 10 years. Um, it will be interesting to see how that goes and um, a lot of organizations are already embracing it. So it's going to be inter interesting to see um, how that will evolve. We also see a difference in our corporate culture. So younger people who have never really worked in physical workspaces um, sometimes find it difficult to establish the proper social graces and professional etiquette. I've seen some people write emails as if they're writing WhatsApp messages. It's not professional and it's also not really acceptable um, within certain spaces. So I've seen you're a young person and you're writing an email to the governor of a country, <clears throat> excuse me, the governor of a country or to the head of state or some government official or some very important person. Um, you should be able to use professional etiquette in your communication to that person. So this is a skill that the younger generation needs to develop. The next 10 years, what to expect? Offices and desks will be replaced with spaces. And like I've said, there's no more, you know, nobody's going to own an office, just a space. Book a space, park yourself somewhere and work. 
Um, there will also be a lot of emphasis on well-being, mental health and inclusion. So there's been a lot of conversation about inclusion, inclusion, inclusion. Um, everybody must be included. Um, everybody must be catered for. Everybody's needs and concerns must be addressed. So we're going to be working in, you know, in a much more agile way, um, workplace tribes, groups and teams, as opposed to divisions and units and departments. So we're going to be doing more teamwork as opposed to divisions, units and um, departments. And of course, skill jobs versus unskilled. So there are two schools of thoughts. One school of thought says that the skilled labor will be more in demand and therefore people will do well to equip themselves with the relevant technical skills. The second school of thought says that robots and machines are, you know, very good and able to replace skilled labor since such jobs are more routine and can be easily copied by an algorithm. Unskilled labor, on the other hand, is not routine and therefore requires a larger amount of human inputs and is less likely to be replaced by a machine. So there you have it, arguments for and against skilled as opposed to non-skilled and which ones the robots will be taking over. But what I do know is that either way, you prepare yourself and you equip yourself to remain relevant in the workplace of the future. So how do we prepare for this workplace of the future? Upskill, develop and learn. And we can do that. There are anyhow, you know, we have so many avenues to do that. There are online courses from a lot of the Ivy League schools. YouTube has how to videos. Um, we can develop almost any skill you need. So you just have to be disciplined enough to develop that skill. Information is everywhere. Nobody is, you know, a sole custodian of the information. Information is ready to deliver labor. And that's why I said that there's going to be a shift away from um, from um, um, uh, education as we know it to capabilities. So upgrade your tech skills. The future is technology and you need to know how to use it optimally. There are softwares that can do so many things. So use it to increase your overall capabilities and productivity. Tech is your friend. I use tech a lot. If I can find a software or an app that can help me get my job done, you know, more accurately, faster, more, you know, and help me be more productive, I'm on it immediately because I want to be able to do my job well. I want to be able to do it faster and I want it to be the best. So tech is your friend. Embrace tech. Learn everything you need to learn that will help you make your job um, better and faster. Clean up your social media profiles. So, you know, use your privacy settings. But even with that, uh, the truth is that there is nothing that is hidden. So watch what you say and do publicly. It could come back to haunt you in the future. Maybe when you're contesting for governor or you're contesting for presidency. You don't want a journalist to dig into your past and say you said something 10 years ago that, you know, might, you know, might be termed to be a derogatory statement or something. So you don't want to give a wrong, and you also don't want to give a wrong perspective, wrong, uh, you don't want to give a wrong perspective to prospective employers. You don't want to give them a wrong impression. So one thing you can do is when you are job searching, create a dedicated email for your job search. That is not the same email you use to open your social media um, accounts. Why? I understand that you can use technology to use your email address to locate your social media accounts. I don't know how they do it, but I, I understand that they can do that. So it's advisable at least to limit their ability to, to, to find you on Facebook or Instagram. Try and use a separate email completely different from um, your social media accounts to when you're job searching. And then also plan your life. While long term careers and job securities are dwindling, Career paths and plans still exist. So where do you want to be in 5, 10, 15 years and how do you plan to get there? So you still need to plan your life. You need to structure yourself and have a long term plan and work towards it. Be the best as companies strive 
to be the best company to you know for people to work for you also ought to strive to be the best skill to hire so be known and be the best in whatever field that you you know you are of endeavor that you are in be the best and remember unleash your potential you've got greatness in you be adventurous explore try new things you will never know what you can achieve until you try So don't be afraid of the future. Embrace it. Because the future is you. Thank you so much for listening. Um, remember to subscribe to my channel. And you can follow me on Facebook and LinkedIn. For more content uh, and presentations like this. So thank you so much and remember to subscribe.